Hello, my name is Christine Moot. I'm from the North Carolina School of Science and Math, and I'm going to demonstrate how to measure dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is a measure of the concentration of O2 gas in a sample of water. Um, so there's, we're going to uh, measure dissolved oxygen using a Lamott dissolved oxygen test kit, and this is really um, one of the most accurate ways to measure dissolved oxygen. So I unscrew um, my water sampling bottle, and it's a specialized kind of bottle uh, where the cap actually has a little indentation in it to leave a little extra room for you to add your chemicals later. Place both my cap and my sample into the water that I'm collecting. Now normally you'd probably be collecting water in a pond or a stream. In this case I'm just collecting it in this uh, water basin just for demonstration purposes. So you want to kind of rinse both um, the water bottle and the cap um, in the water that you're sampling and that way if there's any residue from a previous water sample you're essentially diluting it with this water sample. Next you want to uh, collect your water so you do that by placing uh, the water bottle and the cap below the surface of the water. You want to tap the bottle gently to dislodge any air bubbles and then actually place the cap onto the bottle while um, both the cap and the bottle are still below the surface of the water. And this way you prevent getting any air bubbles into your sample, which would affect your results. Once you've collected your water sample, you want to dry off your hands. And then um, the directions for um, co conducting the dissolved oxygen test are actually just on the inside of the test kit, so it's very convenient. It describes the sam sampling method that I just went over. Then there's two additional major phases. There's sample preservation and then the test procedure. It's important that you do the sample preservation step immediately after collecting the water sample. So if you collect the water sample out in the field at a stream or a pond, you'd want to do the sample preservation immediately. Uh, once you've done the sample preservation step, you can wait several days to do the test procedures. The first thing you do is uh, open up your sample and add eight drops of manga sulfate solution. And this all comes with the kit. Then I'm going to add eight drops of the alkaline potassium iodide solution. So, eight drops. And then I place the cap on my sample and um, mix it up. and then allow the precipitate to settle. And often students um, will want to go ahead to the next step before the precipitate is actually settled, but you do want to wait until the precipitate is at least about halfway down. While we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and get out the next reagent, um, which is a sulfamic acid powder. Um, and this spoon is actually designed to measure out exactly one gram, so you don't actually have to get out of balance and weigh it. So you open up uh, the, the tube and get out one scoopful, which is one gram. And once again, students are usually skeptical that this amount of sulfamic acid powder is actually going to fit into your uh, sampling bottle, but it actually will. So it's probably about one-third of the way down, but I still need to let my precipitate settle a little bit more. You can see that it's um, clear, fairly clear on top, but still a lot of precipitate on the bottom. Now my precipitate has settled to below the halfway point, so I'm going to go ahead and add my one gram of sulfamic acid powder. Then I'm going to cap and mix, and I want to get the precipitate to dissolve. So again, there might be um, some kinds of little particles in the water that just aren't going to dissolve, like bits of, of decomposing leaf, but I want to make sure that the powder, that the granules are completely dissolved, the sulfamic acid powder. Once that powder is dissolved, my sample is now fixed, so I've completed the sample preservation stage. Um, and that means I can wait as long as I want 
to actually uh, do the test procedure. So this is the part I would need to do right after collecting my sample, but now I, I can wait um, several days or so if I need to before I actually measure the amount of dissolved oxygen. So I don't see any more precipitate, so um, my sample is now fixed. Now I'm going to demonstrate the test procedure, which um, you, again, you could do several days later. Um, you're going to use this thing called a titration tube, and it's not always intuitive to people that this is a titration tube, but it's the tube that's marked um, to show the 20 milliliter line, and it has a cap with a little hole in it. Okay? So you want to actually fill the titration tube to the 20 milliliter line using your sample that you've already fixed. And notice I have extra sample left over. So if I get kind of, you know, in general, it's good to, to do the actual test procedure a couple of times. And you may even, you even have enough sample here to do it three times. So you can kind of check your work. So I'll save my fixed sample. I put this cap with a hole in it on my uh, titration tube. And then I'm going to use this thing called a titrator. Okay, it looks like a syringe. Essentially, we're doing a miniature titration. Students think of a titration as a chemistry lab where you have this big pipette. This is basically serving as that pipette. So we're doing a very small scale titration here. I'm going to take my titrator and I'm going to make sure it's uh, pushed all the way in. And I want to uh, collect a sample of sodium thiosulfate. So I'm going to unscrew the cap. And this bottle also has a small hole in the top. So I'll place my titrator in there, turn the bottle upside down, and slowly uh, draw in the sample. And I want to fill it all the way full. So what that means is I want to draw it down until the bottom of my plunger is down at the zero milligrams per liter mark. So now I have my sample of sodium, sodium thiosulfate. And now I'm ready to do my titration. So I'm going to um, add one drop at a time. And again, this is challenging for students to be patient enough to do one drop at a time. But you want to add one drop at a time and then swirl after each addition. And what you're looking for is a color change until it becomes very faint yellow. So it's kind of helpful to hold your sample against a piece of white paper to decide when it's very faint yellow. The change happens pretty quickly, so that's why it's helpful to swirl after each drop is added. And you can see at this point the color is getting a little fainter. Okay, I have a pale yellow solution, so I'm going to stop at this point. One thing that's very important is I'm now going to remove my titrator, but I don't want to change the position of the plunger on the titrator. I need to leave this exactly as it is. I'm going to just set the titrator down, take the lid off my titration tube, and now I'm going to add um, eight drops of my starch indicator. So now I put the cap back on, and I put the titrator back in, and of course I haven't adjusted the position of the plunger on the titrator. And um, I can kind of swirl my sample, so you notice it's a blue color now. What I want to do is I want to titrate my sample one drop at a time, swirling after each addition, until the blue color disappears and I have a clear solution. So again, the cha color change happens very rapidly, so it's important after each drop uh, to swirl and also again to compare against a white paper. It looks
looks like it's getting a little lighter, but it's certainly not clear yet. Okay, I'm going to compare against the white paper. It's still slightly purple, so I'm going to add one more drop, swirl, and now I have a clear solution. So to find out my dissolved oxygen concentration, what I'm going to do is remove the titrator, and I actually read my value directly off the titrator in milligrams per liter. So I look at the very bottom of the black plunger, or it might be a different color depending on your titrator. I look at the very bottom of the plunger of the titrator, and in this case, it's lined up with 7.8 milligrams per liter. So that's my dissolved oxygen concentration for my water sample. Once again, um, you would want to uh, do this measurement twice. So remember, we've, uh, done, we did our sample preservation. This sample is fixed. Um, and so this sample is here waiting. I can you know, measure it later. Um, a good practice is to do the te actual test procedure, where I would, I would uh, dump this sample, get a new sample in my titration tube, um, do my titration again. And if my results agreed with what I just did, um, I could probably stop at that point. If they didn't agree, I, I have enough sample here to actually do a third titration. So I'd probably follow up with that. If all three of the titrations are different, produce different results, you might want to start with a new water sample at that point.